Okay, so Elecro have just sent me this 11.6 inch IPS touchscreen and it's designed to go with lots of devices. So let's have a look at what comes in the box. So we've got basic instructions concentrating really on a Raspberry Pi 4. We've got a 12 volt, two amp power supply with just an ordinary barrel jack on it. We've got a cable here, ribbon cable, and also we've got controls. Uh, so these are things like menu, up, down, enter, micro HDMI to mini HDMI, obviously micro HDMI for the Pi 4, mini HDMI to mini HDMI. This is a little Velcro strap, Phillips screwdriver, USB-A to micro USB, and USB-A to USB-C. So here's the back of the display, and as you can see, it's got these little sliders here, so I can just move them around, and then when it fits an SBC, I can screw it into place. There's a couple of ribbon cables going to the display, so this I would imagine is touchscreen, and this is for the display itself. Uh, and then at the top, we've got a USB-A, we've got HDMI mini, and also we've got micro USB. Uh, and it's got buttons here, so you can see uh, it says power, menu, up, down, and enter which are the same buttons as you've got on this breakout board. So if you want to plug this in, you can, and you'd use that cable I showed earlier on. You can see it must be plugged into here. We also have four mounting screws here, so if you're going to put it into, say, I don't know, an arcade cabinet, a car, or something like that, then you can use that. I've just tried it with the standoffs, the standard standoffs that you'd have with the Raspberry Pi, and they screw in, the thread fits just fine. And then the front of the unit, you can see it's got a cover on it. It looks very much like an original iPad, uh, although it's a 16 by nine ratio. So I've attached my Raspberry Pi 4. You can see the USB cable on the far left here is plugged into the micro USB, and that's labeled touch. So that handles the touch screen side of it. Uh, the HDMI cable is basically going around in a circle and then into the micro HDMI. And then we've got USB-C, which would normally be the power input on a Pi, and that's plugged into the USB-A on the board here, which you could see says five volt out. So then all we need to do is plug power in, and that's with this barrel jack plugged into here. So I've plugged in the barrel jack. I just need to switch it on now because I need to uh, know which way is up. So you can see the lights come on on the Pi. Okay, you can see it started up a bit weird. I haven't done anything to the operating system. This is Raspberry Pi OS uh, in KDE Plasma, but as you can see, something's definitely wrong there. If I press the menu button, uh, you can see the menu comes up all right. So the display's all right. It's just a setting that I need to find. And you can see we've got various different settings here. Uh, if I go back up to the top, so brightness, contrast, eco, DCR, and sharpness. Then we've got Horizontal, vertical, clock, and phase, although they're all grayed out apart from aspect. So if I wanted to change aspect ratio, I can change that to four by three, so like an old TV. Uh, and the enter button seems to be more a back button on this menu. Uh, so let's go back in there, and yeah, red, green, blue, language, all the positioning, transparency. Uh, I've got a reset option. I wonder if that will help me. Ah, you have to press menu twice to reset it. Still doesn't fix this. And then on the settings option, this gives us all our inputs. Signal source, low blue light, volume, free sync. Uh, so the volume must be the audio output stage. So 1366 by 768 is the resolution. So I think I'm gonna change the config.txt to match that. Okay, so I've booted up my Raspberry Pi and I've plugged my SD card in and you can see it's coming up here. So we click on that, actually it's this one, so boot and open with file manager. And we need to go into config.txt, actually you could try just HDMI safe equals one. Let's try that. Obviously not safe enough, still the same. Just in case I flashed a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS, but as you can see the same issue is happening. I quite like the fact that this box looks like it's a TV aerial. This is uh, the HDMI cable that's sticking up. So I've booted up a Pi 400 and I'm getting exactly the same thing. The touchscreen's working, but you can see that it's not registering in the right place because it's got this weird 45 degree angle thing. So I have managed to sort it now playing around with the config.txt. So let's just switch it on. Put a little power symbol next to it, could be better. 
So here's KDE Plasma running. I've just used the keyboard to log in, but just to show you that all the touch screen works as it should. Everything is fine. And uh, just to show you a little more of the box, obviously you can see I've got the controls at the front here. And uh, if we go around the back, ignore these two bits. They're just a bit of ballast uh, to stop it from tipping forward. Although I have put some feet underneath it to, to lay it back. Obviously this is intended to be built into some wooden structure or, or a 3D printed structure, but you can see all the wiring on the back. I've just got this one cable going in for power and then the board is powering the Pi 4 and I'm running this operating system from an SD card at the moment. Here's Raspberry Pi OS, which is also working fine now that I've made all the changes. Everything is just as it should be. So the changes I made to Raspberry Pi OS, which worked for me, uh, was in config.txt, I added HDMI underscore group equals two and HDMI underscore mode equals 86. But I also hashed out DT overlay equals VC4 dash KMS dash V3D. Uh, and that worked for me on Raspberry Pi OS, but I was sent a different config.txt from Elecro, which I've downloaded in here. This one here, config modified. And they don't seem to have made any of those changes. It has got display auto detect equals one, but they have still got DT overlay FKMS enabled. And this one works with my KDE Plasma build. So I'm not quite sure, um, but uh, either of these methods seem to work perfectly fine. Right, let's try something else. Let's try the CADAS Edge 2 Pro and switch on. And we're in, is the touch screen gonna work? It does. So let's try home, settings, and the Aptide store. Yeah, that's working fine. And let's switch that off. Okay, so it works well with OpenFide. So here's my Melee Windows 11 mini PC. So let's switch on the monitor first. Uh, it can't power this device because this device uses 12 volt USB-C and the board only outputs 5 volt, which is obviously much safer. So let's switch that on. I've got the USB cable going to the micro USB, which should give me touch control. I've got HDMI going straight into the monitor and obviously power is going straight from the mains. See, no problems with resolution on this or with OpenFide. OpenFide is Chromium, uh, which also has Android support as well. So you can see it started up. And if I swipe up, the touch is working. Is it gonna give me an on-screen keyboard? It does, so I can log in. So let's try the notifications and let's launch the web browser and Raspberry Pi Imager. Yeah, you can see it's coping with that absolutely fine. No problem at all. Let's go full screen with the browser. And, uh, oh, let's try the sound on this. And let's do a search for one of my videos, something that has some audio on it. There we go. Okay, so no sound. So let's plug something into that headphone jack. So I've got a speaker here and I've got a three and a half mil audio cable. There you go, so that's working fine. So this is Orange Pi 5 and I've put Orange Pi OS in there which is an Android based operating system so let's give this a try. Uh, I'm back to powering the board because uh, like most single board computers this runs on 5 volt so it should be able to power it. And the fan as well. So it's starting up alright again. No problems with the resolution. It just is the Raspberry Pi with 1366 by 768. And actually, if we have a look in the instructions, it's only the 11.6 inch display that has that resolution. They also do a 10.1 at 1280 by 800, a nine inch at 1280 by 720, and a seven inch at 1024 by 600. And we can call up the apps, and we can launch, say, the Aptide store. And again, if we hit search, then yeah, we get the keyboard come up on screen, and that's all working nicely. Okay, so very impressive, Alacro. Thanks for sending this to me to test. Uh, obviously you can see how flexible it is with various different operating systems and various different boards and computers and things like that. Really like the way the touch control is controlled by USB because it does seem to make it very, very flexible. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.